This video will help you figure out how to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. We have been working on adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. So for example, if I have a fraction like 2 sixths and I add it to 3 sixths, I can add my numerators and keep my denominator the same and get 5 sixths. Likewise, when I'm subtracting, if I have a fraction like 7 ninths and I subtract 1 ninth, I'm going to subtract the 7 and the 1 and get 6 and keep my denominator the same. I can also go ahead and simplify this into a more simplified fraction. But what do I do when the fractions have different denominators? So for example, let's say I had 1 fourth plus 1 third. How do I add those together? I can't just add them together because the 4 and the 3 are different denominators. So let's take a look at what to do. Before I add the fractions together, let's review something called LCM. And this is something we did a couple of chapters ago. LCM stands for Least Common Multiple. So let's say I had two numbers, like 2 and 5. I want to find the least common multiple for those two numbers. So what I do is I need to list out the multiples of each number. So for 2, I'm listing out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I could go on and on and on if I wanted to. And then for 5, I'm listing out the multiples of 5. So 5, 10, 15, I could go on and on. And if you recall, the least common multiple is the smallest multiple that they have in common. So in this case, the LCM would be 10. Now LCM is what we need to do to find the LCD which is the least common denominator. So that's what we're going to do in order to add or subtract fractions when the denominators are different. So going back to my example, let's say I had one-third plus one-fourth. And I'm writing them vertically because it's just my preference. You could write them horizontally if you want, but I think visually it's easier to see it when you're writing the fractions going this way as opposed to going this way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up equivalent fractions, which we've talked about. And what I need to do is I need to find the least common denominator for 4 and 3. So I'm going to write out my list of common denominator or of denominators or multiples for 3 and 4. So I'm going to go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, dot dot dot. I could go on and on. For 4, I'm going to go 4, 8, 12, 16, dot dot dot. And my LCM, which is also my LCD, is 12. So now I'm going to take and have a new fraction, so that's going to be here and here, and both of those are going to have a denominator of 12 because that's the LCD. Now, what I need to do is I need to turn these fractions into new fractions with denominators of 12. And we've done this before. So, I'm going to take 1 third and 1 fourth and make equivalent fractions with denominators of 12. So how do I get from 3 to 12? Well, I multiply by 4. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I multiply by 4, and my new numerator is 4. Um, the second fraction, to get from 4 to 12, I multiply by 3. Again, whatever I do to the bottom, I also do to the top. So I multiply by 3. My new numerator is 3. Now, I have two fractions with the same denominator, which means I can just add them and I would get 7 twelfths as my answer. And I don't need to reduce it or put it in simplest form, so it's good to go. Now what's super important to remember is, if you're changing the numerator or the denominator of a fraction, that means you also have to change the numerator. So notice, if I change the denominator, the numerator also has to change. It cannot stay the same. If it stays the same, then you're totally changing the fraction. For subtraction, I can do the same thing. So, let's say I have a fraction like 8 ninths minus 1 third. I need to find the LCD for both 3 and 9. So, I list out my multiples. 
and my LCD is 9. Now you'll notice one of my fractions already has a denominator of 9, and that's okay. Sometimes the LCD will be one of the denominators that's already there. So, in the case of this fraction, since the 9 stays the same on the bottom, that means the 8 can stay the same on the top. Then, for my 3, I need to figure out, okay, how do I get from 3 to 9? Well, I multiply by 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I also have to multiply my numerator by 3, and that gives me 3 ninths. Now I have 8 ninths minus 3 ninths, and because the denominators are the same, I can just subtract, and I get 5 ninths. And that would be my answer.